Hello and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to be doing another quick tip uh, to address questions that we've been receiving uh, from you guys and this one is focusing on how can you get the first row of your data to stay in place so that as you scroll down through your data like I say that first row always stays uh, in its same place as being at the top of the data. Uh, this is particularly useful uh, when you've got a large data set because it enables you to remember or to visualize and actually see um, your column headings as you go down so you don't forget. And the example we have in front of us is some global data uh, by country and you can see that we've got uh, some various groupings or countries, uh, regions in C and D, and then we've got some population information in E, F and G. And the problem you obviously have is as you, if you just to scroll down here to give an example, as soon as you start going through the information, it, unless you can remember you've got a great memory or you've obviously looked at the data a lot and you just know, you can soon forget what these numbers relate, relate to in E, F and G. Um, so that's particularly a good rate reason why you want to freeze um, the first row and I then nearly went into it but the definition is freezing panes and that's what we're going to use to be able to make this happen so in order to do that we can just scroll to the top of our data set and all we need to do is go into our tab at the top here now uh, so we've got various tabs from home insert page layout the one we want is view and what we can do is we then look for and your layout might be slightly different but you want the option of freeze panes so you select that and you can see that we have three options. So what we want to do is we want to select the freeze top row option uh, for this first example. So we click that and as you can see, and it might just come out on the screen, you can see there's a faint line now um, just at the base of this first row. And you can see it sort of continues over here, just slight, a row slightly darker than the other grid lines. But actually if I just um, take grid, grid lines off quickly, you can see that line run across there and that what that has done is that's fixed our freeze panes to that first row. Um, so what will happen now is if we scroll down through our data to a point, you can see that those that first row has that first row has stayed in place because um, you can now see we scroll down to row 30, but row one is still fixed in place there. So that enables us to see no matter how far down we go, we can see the column headers for each of our columns. So what we'll do is just scroll back up and just look at another options we have. And the first one to do, or the next part to address is, okay, say you've got freeze, freeze panes on, how do you remove them? So we go back to our view tab, find freeze panes, and we now have the option here to unfreeze panes. So we just click that and the freeze panes are now gone. And if you scroll down, you, your headers or your first row would um, disappear as you scroll through the data. So other options that we have is we've also got another one here. Um, so we've looked at freeze top row in the middle. We also have freeze first column. So that does exactly the same. If we were to click that, you can now see we've got this bold line going down um, at the edge of column A here, uh, between column A and B. So what will happen is if we are now to scroll to the right, that first column of column A is going to stay fixed in place. So it does exactly the same as what we first did with the freeze rows, but this time it's just doing it on the columns. And once again, to remove that, all we need to do is go back to freeze panes and now unfreeze panes. And it's worth just adding there is you can only freeze one pane at a time. So if you decided that actually you want um, the columns freeze, um, you, you had the column froze, but you actually wanted the row froze, then you'd have to obviously unfreeze panes of the columns and then refreeze based on the row. So that's those two separate. But often what we need to do is we want to always freeze that top row, but we might also want to freeze a, com a column as well. Uh, one, so we can see the column headings, and two, as we scroll through our data, and admittedly this data we have here isn't too extensive that we need to scroll across, but we might want to also fix uh, the column B in place so that as we go look through our data, we can see which data aligns to what country. So in order to do that, we can look at our third and final option for freeze panes. And if you go back to there, and we can see we've got this option of, so we looked at freeze top row in the middle, we've looked at freeze first column, and we're now going to look at freeze panes. So this gives us a bit more flexibility and allows us to freeze um, an identified row and column or position. So what we want to do there 
is use this option here. And luckily we've already selected where we want to place this. So we've gone to column C uh, into um, row number two. And what this will do, it will place um, a freeze panes or a pane that will be frozen. And it will be having our made our selection here in C2, it will freeze the row that is the top of this box or our selection we have here. That will be the row that is frozen, the one above. And what it will also do is it will freeze columns that are on the left edge of this box, so column B. So if we just go freeze panes, what you can now see is as we scroll through the data, and let's just go down a bit for an example, you can see we've now got that first row frozen in place, so we can see our headers, and we're down to row 48, so we've proven that's working. But if we're now to go to the right-hand side of the data, you can see that column B has also been frozen in place as well. So that means as we scroll across, not only have we got our headers in, or as we scroll down, we've got our headers in place, but also as we scroll across, we can see this country column against each of our data sets. So it's a lot easier to see what information aligns to what country. So that was a short little video, but we hope you found it um, very useful. If you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel and give this uh, video a big thumbs up. Also, while you're at it, do make sure you hit that notification bell so YouTube notifies you as soon as we add any more videos. If you have any questions, you've got um, do leave us a comment below. And we've also got links to our Facebook and website in the description to this video. Until next time, thank you very much for watching.